Hey y'all, Matt Donald here. So rather than tell you specifically what we're going to talk about this month on the Paleo Bites Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald, I don't know, it's going to be some Jurassic Park property or some crap. I don't know. I thought instead the best way to advertise this is by playing a clip of last month's episode where I talk about the fever dream that is the Dinoverse books by Scott Simpson. So roll the tape. <laughs> And then she murmurs the line specifically to the GK Acrocanthosaurus. Again, I cannot stress this enough. A normal ass Acrocanthosaurus. So kiss me already. I've only been waiting a hundred million years. What the hell are these books? <laughs> she falls in love with a normal ass Acrocanthosaurus. I'm, I'm so angry and mad about this that I'm mixing up these dinosaurs. And I'm a dinosaur nerd. I never do that. She falls in love with an Acrocanthosaurus and then only agrees to get together with the human that's interested in her when this human is merged with the psyche of that normal ass Acrocanthosaurus. This books are insane. <laughs> ah. <sighs> Anyways, roar, growl. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast that, like miners digging for fossils, is boring. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Matthew Donald. Each week, I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a geos of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week, I'm joined by someone who has returned... His, fr- his last time on the show was episode, I think it was 26, uh, Peru, uh, Perusaurus. Um, and we're once more talking about uh, peace. S- <laughs> Wait, that sounds really bad. <laughs> that sounds very bad. Shame on you. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's Alan Brooks. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm kind of excited to talk about our topic for today. Yes, yes, Do you indeed. you want to introduce that? Yes, well, uh, well, actually, first because I always because it's been a while, so for, for for you're forgiven for forgetting how the show works. Because like just to pat out the episode a little bit, I often like to start with some sort of little dinosaur related question or something to kind of. Uh, and then since uh, you've been on the show last, we've gotten really into Dungeons and Dragons. So, <laughs> so uh, you are a DM, and that's you often are a dungeon master. Yeah, um, I'm a dungeon master most the, most of the time because I'm kind of the big passionate one and. It's a time sink I can sink my time into to, uh, you know, create everything that goes on in the backlog. Players uh, players have it easy. They just say, I just remember what happened last week and show up with my dice and react. Oh, let's see. The thing is, I sometimes barely even remember what happened last week so when I play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I... Uh, Life's busy. I de- yeah, no, it is. It's fine. And to be fair, I I, I think we, we we do some stuff. We role play, you know. Like we, it's not just all up to. I mean, role look, play, I, use yeah. your things. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, so um, here's the dice away question. I'm going to ask you if you could throw in some pacasitas into uh, which is the animal we're going to talk about into your next camp, like like one shot campaign. How would you incorporate them? <laughs> uh. I'd probably have to include them as something you would have to look for. Oh gosh, that's actually a hard question. Cause See, packing... I was thinking could, it could be an enemy, but like since we think it might have been semi-aquatic, potentially, may, mm-hmm. mostly land, but occasionally on, on the water, maybe it could be an enemy that could swim and walk on land. Yeah, because I'll be honest, one of the things that most D and D characters aren't really good at is underwater combat, because underwater combat just makes Everything's so much more complicated and harder for everyone. Like, try oh, and shoot sure. someone with a ranged weapon underwater. Good luck. <laughs> Basically, for everything sure. gets turned into into uh, harder to hit, let's just say, to avoid oh, yeah. the thing. But yeah, it would be fun, especially if we did it similar to another appearance of something of very similar, the Ambulocetus, using it as a kind of crocodile analog. Right. But, now, now, certain spells I have, would they work on water? Like, obviously, Bonfire wouldn't, which is one of my one of the spells my mage uses, um, well, my wizard uses. Uh, when they I would technically but work. Would, the problem uh, is, when you're submerged in water, you take half damage from fire spells, which is actually a little odd, because 
You feel like it'd be zero damage from fire spells. <laughs> well, it would depend, really. It's like, how big is the fire spell? I mean, if we tried to get into this, the very engineering or scientific engineering, uh, or no, phys- science and physics sort of thing, water actually makes a heat scarier because air is actually oh, I think a I've really heard this, actually. Yeah. crappy uh, conductor of heat, whereas water's really good. So it's either if you have a inner large body, the heat just dissipates because water also conducts and stores yeah. heat really well. But if it's oh, like, yeah. say, you're in a hut, in a, in a say, a tub, and someone you cast bonfire underneath it, uh, after a few rounds, they might be taking, they could realistically be taking more damage. I've actually gotten <laughs> a steam burn myself, which is, Oh, ouch. wow. Well, I They're know painful. there was the movie Dante's Peak, which there was a volcano erupting, and there was a part where, like, these this couple that was, like, bathing in a hot spring suddenly died because the lava started appearing in the hot spring, which I don't know how scientifically accurate that Actually, is. Actually, I think what happened was because basically volcanoes are not just molten rock. They're also lots of rather yeah. fun and, uh, or shall we say, very scary chemicals. And my thought was that the pools had turned acidic enough that they basically, actually, I don't know what it's called when you die from acid, but basically they got killed by acid. Acidification kind of, yeah. Oh, man. It basically got acided to death. Well, I don't that's, know. It's a niche enough well, thing that no one really has a name. No for. one wants to die I bet you there's a scientist so, with it. But. Certainly not our Pachycetus uh, when we were casting fire spells onto them. No. So now let's get into the science part of Pachycetus, uh, the actual discussion of the show. <laughs> it's uh, pa- it means Pakistani whale because it's from Pakistan. Um, uh, so type it is a cetacean, a group of artiodactyl mammals that include dolphins and whales. Yes, this thing, despite fitting the atomical. Uh, and skeletal definition of a cetacean was a wolf-like land animal. So, no. do we have any like, idea of how aquatic it was? Like, yes, it eventually that line, that kind of family eventually became the cetaceans. Where most whales nowadays, you take them out of the water and put them on the land, they're just going to die, suffocate. Well, and, apparently, even. some um, there was like uh, there was like there was an idea that sometimes it might be semi aquatic or maybe it'd be like a tapir or something, um, like. Something about like there was a study in two thousand nine that like was indicated that could they could stand in water almost to- totally immersed without losing visual contact of air because um, the limb bones of them are osteoscleric which is uh, they they're, they're which means they're basically very dense the bones are very dense oh. which is good for if you're trying to be submerged <laughs> okay because it actually talks about I was looking over on Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, I was looking on Wikipedia. It says that they too, have a close relation to hippos, which do the exact same thing, which is why, despite the fact that hippos, realistically, you look at a hippo, hippos should not be able to swim. But because they are so. Well, they don't really swim, to be fair. They mainly sink. They're more accurate to say they are running on the bottom of the ocean, of the river. Do you, do you want to hear. A, I think I've said this on the show before. Do you want to hear a really scary fact about hippos? They're not fat. That's all no. muscle. <laughs> they have that. Their... Yeah. <laughs> They're like bulletproof. <laughs> so that fun that. Yeah. Uh, if I so think, if I was going after, but you know, like, if I was trying to defend myself from a hippo, I'd like a fifty cal, please, or something big. Uh, I'd like a grenade, which it would bite me, so I'd still die. But I'd take it with me, <laughs> maybe. Uh, or maybe just climb <laughs> yeah. a tree. For all their bulk, they're For not all I know, hip- well, they could just knock the tree down. <laughs> just... Get a big tree then. But okay, okay, enough hippos. It's a boba. Anyways, but yes. Yes, yes, Pachycetus. Thank you for trying to keep it on track. So, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. No, the hippos are actually the most closely related uh, to whales of any uh, of the other inventoed ungulates. Because, like, it's weird. The inventoed ungulates, the artiodactyls, they do still include whales and dolphins, which is weird to me. <laughs> like, it's they a very no weird inclusion. You got deer, uh. bison, giraffes, camels, pigs. Then, <laughs> then suddenly you have whales. <laughs> yeah question so you mentioned something about living like a tapir what does that mean for the uh pachycetus well it could have like div- well it's a kind of a different thing because tapirs are are frugivores and herbivorous so but this would be a predator so probably use the water as like a form of stealth maybe not necessarily swimming but like sort of or maybe swimming a little bit but mainly just like use it as cover to to, to heal or like to get up get fish and other sort of stuff yeah. so so their diet fish mammals well, and also they oh Yes, yes. Sorry, continue, like continuing the. Uh, well, it's more like a question. The, the, what did what do you think they mostly did? Were they most were they starting to go into the fish area, or was it still mostly kind of a, their wolf like uh, 
eating? Because one thing I, I'm looking I at, would... the sucker's got a long head. Well, like, and also it's got eyes on the top of the head, which is a very common uh, adaptation for when you're adaptation, semi-aquatic. Yeah. Sort of like a crocodile, yeah. So maybe it was more like kind of this... Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. It's like a mammal uh, was dipping yeah. into way too many uh, ideas at the time. It's like, hmm, I'll take a little bit <laughs> yeah, of this crocodile. That's one way to put it. It was, it was dense it was bones going... from who the heck knows where. Um, uh, and then other, have the eyes on yeah. top, but then also have maybe a wolf-like thing. Some Again, well, with the hippos, is maybe they had sparse hair. So more like yeah, a pig yeah. if you've ever seen a pig most pigs well are... you know uh here hold on let me get get back into the stats here because yeah need, uh, okay let's go that. size 4.5 to 6.5 feet slash 1.5 to 2 meters long i couldn't seem to find anything on the weight but i'm assuming it's probably a couple hundred pounds probably um, yeah uh diet carnivore primarily fish and other small animals so even though it was like a wolf it didn't like hunt in packs and bring down like bigger animals as, as yeah. far as we know like as far as we know uh, we are guessing look, behavior on a bunch of bones time Early Eocene, fifty to forty-eight million years ago. So this is like we're talking about like how quick mammals evolved into whales. So this was like fifteen to to seventeen million years after, or or I guess sixteen to eighteen million years after the dinosaurs died out. So, okay, and of course with the dinosaurs seven. came the lar- were the uh, large marine reptiles vanished, yeah, like the mosasaurs. Yeah, so mosasaurs as well as Ziphactanus. Yep. Yep. Uh, a few elasmosaurians well. were still left. There were no ichthyosaurs left. They died in the, mid- the early Cretaceous. Wait, there were uh, some elasmos elasmosaurians. Are yeah, we- yeah, like elasmosaurus, like plesiosaurs. Really? Yeah. I thought plesi- they were one of the blanket uh, extinctions at the. Oh end no, of no, the, no, the ichthyosaurs died, but the plesiosaurs they lasted until the end, I believe. So. Hold on, let me double check. Them. <laughs> oh, I'm fairly uh, sure because because Elasmosaurus was at least the to the uh the Elasmosaurus was at the very end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're meaning to the end of the Cretaceous. Okay. Yes. Yes. That's what I mean. I thought yes, you said Cretaceous. they lived past the Cretaceous, and I'm like, oh no 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 no. Like, okay. So <laughs> you must not feed the Nessie supporters. <laughs> ah, no, it's real. It's real. Actually, no. Here's the thing. That's like the Nessie supporters. We don't know if any uh of the of the marine reptiles were actually freshwater anyways. So that Which, would Pachycetus probably freshwater or Yeah, I'd say so. Uh brackish sort of swamps. Uh so location like That's I true. said Pakistan, uh described in 1981, pop culture appearances somewhere in the world the game, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> True. That joke is still has has not changed in the last 200 episodes that you've been No. No, that one has so... not changed. Okay, so here's a few um evolutionary features that Pachycetus had that make it seem like that even though it looks like kind of a wolf thing it doesn't look too aquatic it had a lot of features that helped it with an aquatic sort of uh, environment so it had a thickened skull bone which is specialized for underwater underwater hearing it's called the auditory bulla okay and sort of like how we were talking about how whales don't really have ears so there's like yeah. a fat pack. There's like a there's like a, a bit of the, the, lower, the lower jaw that has like a place to store fat that extends towards the ear bone, which are both associated with underwater hearing. Okay, I wonder if in later cetaceans that was what evolved into the melon, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I've heard it's called the melon. The, yeah, so yeah, like, on later cetaceans mm-hmm. that have become their echolocation, but yeah, like, if that's that's probably one of the early predecessors though that's going to have to shift to the top of the skull have to you know, basically do a whole bunch of modifications in order to in, to uh, facilitate echolocation which is a really powerful which I doubt this thing had <laughs> like, yeah no no <laughs> this is way too early if yeah, this thing had so... the body plan and what it looked like I mean yes it probably lists hears better in the water than we do but uh, no right. echolocation no, exactly. Now, here's the thing, though. It does have a small mandibular foramen, uh, which is something that, based on that um, description, I assume is something to do with the uh, the teeth and jaws. Other cetaceans have much larger ones. Terrestrial animals have smaller ones. So once more, this is an intermediary, intermediate fossil, which, to be fair, every fossil is an intermediate fossil. <laughs> We're all evolving into something else. Theoretically, everything so. is an intermediate fossil. But, okay, <laughs> so it is basically starting to develop a better hearing underwater, which... And then I'm the a little f- surprised the- about because I would think that underwater sight and 
the closest analog smell would be more important. But oh no, hearing oh underwater like this whale songs, they'll go for miles. Yeah, miles that miles. was Sound that was basically. So far I always thought underwater. that that was more of a not so much as an evolutionary advantage, basically more of a communication once the echolocation and everything really started to get going. But oh, focusing on hearing uh, when you spend most of your time. Oh, it's probably, well, I mean, like, it's it's not really hearing so much as vibrations. It's kind of like touch. Uh, like, I mean, okay, it's also, yeah. oh, I guess it's also kind of like hearing in that regard. But sort of like, especially if you're like an underwater predator, it might be useful to be able to sense when a fish is swimming away, you know, that's cut butts kind of close if you're still or whatever. Okay. Uh, so here's now here's a couple of uh, things that like in that show that like while it might be aquatic, there's some things that make it not aquatic. The nose is at the tip of the snout. That's not usually yeah. how it yeah. is in uh, water animals. That's land mammals. That <laughs> so, is land mammals. Because if you look at crocodiles. Their nostrils, nostrils on the are top. pointed very much upwards. So, oh. so, and if you look, obviously, the the blowhole of a whale is their nostrils. Is so. their nostrils, which has done some a rather dramatic shift from the normal location, shifting from the front of the snout where most mammals have it, all the way to like the top of the head. Well, it's kind of, of like it's kind of like how we used to think Brachiosaurus was. <laughs> like, okay. Because remember with that big sort of crest on their head? That yeah. We, like in Jurassic Park, I think it's depicted as the nostrils being there. But now I think we it's more closer to the snout. Okay. so And that would basically be like a resonating chamber or something? Yeah, yeah, or something. I remember a, a detail I had in my Megazoic books. Because Quinn, uh, the the Alpha Commander of the Voyager Corps, she was a Parasaurolophus. And um, I mentioned that she, she was a Parasaurolophus. So it was like she talked, mentioned her crest that had the was with connected to the raising chamber, of the, the, the nasal chamber, whatever. As that meant that, while well, Adora striking appearance, it did mean that when she got angry, she could yell really loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just like, and she ah! probably sounded very distinct when she was loud. Uh, well, least... Actually, Parasaurus is one of the animals that we know exactly how it sounded like based on the, the studies of the resonating chamber, so. Yeah, very distinct resonating yeah. chamber. Okay. So part three all over again, but yeah. So, Pecky, Cetus, was it uh, more on land or more on water? I wager it was mostly on land, but was very comfortable in the water. Kind of like, let's say, a polar bear. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's, that's, that's was, a good comparison, because... Or like a bear in general, I guess I should say, yeah. maybe. I so, I know. think polar bears are probably a more favorable one, because most bears are... Well, if they're going to be going in the water, they're probably, you know, mm. going to stay... Mostly on land, whereas polar bears have to live... Oh, actually, here's a better comparison. Instead of going uh, your sign, let's go uh, pantherine. Apparently, tigers are fairly Oh, that's true. They do swimmers. love water. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. adept makes swimmers, and I don't know tigers if they have eat. ever eat anything in the water as opposed to bears, so maybe my comparison is not as good, but they were yeah. very com they are very comfortable land or water. Yeah, tigers don't really use water. They don't really use water for stealth, though. They they use their bushes and their stripes, though. Yeah. So, which but to be fair, we have no idea if this had stripes or not. We don't have any fur impressions. The appearance so. is dis distinct. I mean, some people I'm say maybe it looked more like a wolf, or it's covered in fur, or more maybe more like an otter. Otters are covered in fur, but yeah. they are also fairly streamlined and are pretty adept swimmers. Or well, like, maybe it was if more you look like, at, like pigs yeah. or um, hippos, where they don't got much fur. Well, it's like, if you look at, like, a seal, for instance, if you look at it, it looks naked. But if you actually see any videos of, like, hand handlers with them at aquariums, that's not naked. If you push against it, it's fur. It's matted fur. Like, oh. Hmm. Okay. So, like, I think hippos are naked, mostly. But, no, I think yeah, seals, I want to feel like seals. But, like, seals, though, it's like, yeah, that's that's thick fur. They have yeah. that's matted. Oh, my hmm. goodness. Uh, before we rate Pachyseus 1 out of 65 million, I remember there was like this really cool little flash. Well, it's not flash anymore because flash is nothing anymore. But it's like an online thing where it's like shows the depths. You get to scroll down to see the depths of uh, of the different zones, the different animals that live there. And, the, and then also as well as certain animals, the, the deepest that they've gone. Mm -hmm. And someone was really shocked. Someone shared on like Facebook, whatever. It's like, Wait, elephant seals can go two miles deep? <laughs> wow. And 
And then because like that's the that's the death of the elephant seal. Like bad props, elephant seals. And then someone was like, "Oh yeah, no, they can." Like, there was a footage. There was had some footage. Someone was having of uh, in they were in their um their deep sea submersible. These scientists they were looking at the camera outside. Of course, the only light is um, from their camera. They're looking around. They're looking at crabs and other stuff. And then suddenly, because you know seals are kind of closely related to dogs, <laughs> a seal that they didn't expect just put its big fat elephant nose <laughs> to the camera. It's like, oh, what's this? <laughs> Hello. Can you help me search for clams? <laughs> and the scientists were just... At first, they were shocked and scared because they, the glowing eyes of the sea, But then they suddenly they just burst out laughing. <laughs> yes. That <laughs> is this cool. Dumb-looking seal. It's like, oh, hello. <laughs> now, what seals are, you doing are here t- now, seals are entirely separate from cetaceans, right? Uh, yes, because okay. seals are, like I said, they're closely related to dogs. They're like... Uh, dogs, okay. They're, um, they're carnivora. Like, so the group of carnivora, that includes... Mm-hmm. And there's the caniforma and the filiforma. Caniformas include, obviously, dogs, but also mustelids and uh, bears seals? and other stuff. But they also and include bears? seals. So oh, Okay. So... so. Yeah, actually, I think that might support the idea of perhaps they were more hairless because whales are completely okay. hairless, hippos are hairless, pigs are. And if this okay, was related to both, hair, then yeah, but they ain't got much. Yeah, it's true. So, this is more related to both. I could see it if it had hair. It was very short hair, like either short hair or very sparse, stringy hair, sort of thing. Okay, because like okay. yeah, especially. It depends on how much it was in the water. If it wasn't in the water too much, I could see it having more hair. But if you have, if it's in the water a lot, like if you have that hair, it has to either be specialized for the water or just gets in the way and creates drag. So yeah, definitely. So, all right, let's rate Pacasitas one out of sixty-five million. I'm gonna rate it uh, fifty-two million. I think it's cool. It's cool that we, that uh, whales started from such humble beginnings. Or small <laughs> so. beginnings. It's like, yeah, this is about the size of a dog, and from that lineage. Oh, whales. like a big dog. Some of them are like six feet long. It's like, a, like, well, they also got a long. They've also got a long tail, but that's true. I guess that's true. So yeah, never mind. A lot dogs of its don't tail. Really that long of a tail. Yeah, yeah so I, I guess that's the body I would agree size of the with dog. you, though. I do have to dock maybe about ten million points because they kind of are a little indecisive. They are not totally sure what they're doing. Their eyes are on the top <laughs> of their head, but their no- nostrils Pick are on the front. One or the other, Pacasitas. <laughs> are they aquatic? Are they? Um, are they terrestrial? They're just kind of this indecisive thing, though. Well, they did decide to ask is, as we all know. <laughs> but besides the <laughs> lack of large, uh, uh, large things besides sharks in the waters, what do you think drove Pachycetus to think? Let's go into the water. No, I am I'm assuming it's just a lack of. It. It's just because, like, like any evolution never has a path. It just takes whatever opportunities okay. are there, and then certain animals with certain mutations that can better fit to be, live in them. They're like, okay, this will work. And yet, I think it was just a lack of a lack of, uh, you know, other animals that like it. Like first, it was good to help it hunt, like especially if it was hunting more like a crocodile or other stuff. And then it was hunting fish, and then it just kept staying in the water more and more because because the the less it was in. Lay- on land, the less it would get eaten on land, and mm-hmm. so the more it would survive. So, what kind of predators would there have been in this time and location? Uh, maybe? Okay, let's find out here. Uh, let's see. It was found. Okay, so it looks like the only things that we fo- uh, fossil USA mounds can prove citations. Uh, Pachycetus ambulocetus, which we'll talk about in a second, and Atacacetus. Well, that sounds cool. It's like Atacacetus with an O instead of an A. <gasps> Well, like that second A. It's still huh. A-T-T-O. <laughs> Atakasius. Uh, yeah, so, hmm. That's weird why it doesn't show other animals that were here. Oh, okay, some sort of stem parasol dactyl, which are like the odd-toed ungulates. It looks like kind of like a tapir horse thing. Okay, so potentially prey for Pachycetus, if it was more If it, if it ate that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Intermediate Million species cro- like these are... <sighs> It's really hard to nail down the behavior because right. Uh, okay, look, this isn't helpful. Animals in caudal formation: Pachycetus, Pachycetus, Amblycetus, Pachycetus. I'm trying. <laughs> Come on, give us something else, because. Uh, okay, so we, uh, for all we know, this place just had Pachycetus and the uh, Anthracubin, which is the st- stem parasodactyl. So okay. there we go. Well, Those are the only two animals map. in its environment. One look at the map, and it looks like um, – now, I can't guess accurately, but it looks like perhaps one of the reasons that there's so few other species is because that section of Pakistan was kind of underwater. 
at least a large portion kind of, of it is probably underwater. I thought you could say underwater, underwater or it was like a political way, like under war. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, during that time, during the Eoprisian or the early Eocene, looks like it was most, it had a lot of coastline and water involved, especially since, you know, India hasn't hit yet. So a well, lot of the also, mountain formation hasn't occurred yet. This was so. when, like, the ice caps still hadn't quite formed yet. They didn't form until the very end of the Eocene. So the the sea levels were a lot higher than they are now. And what's more, actually, this time, it was actually way hotter than it was even in the Cretaceous. <laughs> so. so potentially the Pachycetus went into the water, or the Pachycetus uh, ancestor yeah. went into the water because it was too bloody hot. It was way right. too hot out there. It's like, yeah. let's go into the water to cool down. Uh, oh, probably this. not, because it looks like us ocean acidification was one of the reasons for the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. <laughs> but it does coincide, though. So maybe, yeah, maybe the ocean acidification killed off whatever competition was left. <laughs> mm. That would definitely draw them into the ocean. Plenty of fish and little to no competition. Probably couldn't go yeah. too far out, otherwise into the sea. Otherwise, the sharks would definitely enjoy. Yeah, the sharks were still the, the sharks were having their brief moment to shine. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at Matt D at MatthewDonCreator.com. For your general questions to any of the co-hosts, you can find me on social media at MatthewDonCreator on Facebook, at MatthewDon64 on Twitter and uh, Instagram and everywhere else. And um, also, uh, if you want to follow the, the show, though, uh, you can follow at PaleBitesPodcast at gmail.com. PaleBitesPod on Twitter and Paleo Bites Podcast on Instagram. And if you want to find uh, Alan, just contact me and I'll relay any questions about D&D you inevitably probably have. Yeah, I'm dead to social media. Totally dead. Uh, uh, good, good for you. <laughs> You've avoided the curse. So... All right. I have a book series on Amazon Megazog available for print and Kindle. Obviously, no pack of so It was way after when it took place, so... But, uh... Uh, that's it for this week. I say the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. I feel like this would make like a crocodile like growl. Like <laughs> I don't even you know if you could hear it, but it's kind of this, this snarly sound in the back of the throat. Yeah, I've... you'd feel it more than hear it. Oh, that sounds scary. yeah. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.